Итак, я приглашаю на сцену Вильям Пайпер. Please, stage is yours. So, please. Which side? This side, please. So first of all, thank you very much for coming. Uh, I think it's uh, it's really really great that we can see you here. Well, I'm thank most you. most pleasant there, most pleased to be here and to be able to address this audience, and it's it's wonderful to be part of this. Thank you very much. So looking for a brilliant career, it's really brilliant when you started and where you are now. So could you please give me the idea how you succeeded? What helped you to succeed? Lots of failures, actually. <laughs> It is almost impossible to say from the very beginning where you're going to end up in five years, where you're going to end up in 20 years, or 30 years, or 40 years. Life has a way of dealing you a set of cards, and it's how you play the cards. Uh, I would, if I would suggest anything in how to deal with that is you decide early on in your life whether you want to be independent or dependent. If you're dependent, you'll be working for an employer who will pay you a wage, will tell you what your benefits are, and so forth and so on. When you're independent, you get to set your own. And that's the first decision you make. Everything else will come from there. Schooling is no longer where you start off in second grade and end up in, in the university somewhere. You can change careers many times in, throughout your lifetime, and probably will. I started out uh, as an engineer. I'm an aeronautical engineer. And I'm not even close to being in that profession today. As a matter of fact, I'm a trial attorney. And if you had told me 15 years ago that I would be a trial attorney, I would have laughed. But it's the cards that come out. You take the opportunities, they come. You try to learn what you can learn, lose what you can lose. Uh, you, can, uh, you can fail, you can make it, everybody does. And that's the success. Find what's available to you at the time, even if you have to take a bad job or a bad position at first to get to where you want to go, take it. But uh, uh, still, did you know since the beginning that you would like to be independent or even this decision or, or this uh, dream become true Experience. in between? Uh, yes, to answer your question, it didn't come in between. I knew almost right away that I wanted to be independent as opposed to dependent. I want, I am a participator, I'm not an observer. I don't watch sports on television usually because I used to play sports and I don't want to be that way. But that was sort of, a, that was my family also that, that gave me that sort of confidence to succeed and go places where other people, other people have not. I, for example, was an exchange student in the 60s in Finland, which is unheard of in those days. Uh, it, in it, which I would recommend to anybody, if you have the opportunity to be an exchange student under any circumstances, to take that opportunity. It teaches you about yourself, about your way to uh, persevere, uh, and what brings you pleasure in life to live. Life is about living. Uh, I'm, for example, there's a new movie I just saw about uh, Mark Zuckerman, who invented uh, yes. Facebook. Yes. And right now he's worth, he just had an offer for 500 billion and he's in his mid-twenties. Where's he going to go? What's he going to do with his life after that to bring him happiness that the money can buy him? And you can't. You can, money is the means to an end. It's not the end in itself. It's easy to make money if you want to do it that way. That's your objective. But it brings you no pleasure. That's the problem. In and of itself, it's not worth anything. It's only what you can do with it that, that brings you happiness. Uh, okay, our program, the aim of our program is to teach young people to be active, to know from the beginning what they actually want to dream yep. and to achieve their dreams. Well, that's, that's interesting because I'm, I'm of the opinion you never know what you're going to end up doing. I started off first, as I say, as an engineer in school and I ended up now an attorney through a myriad of phrases, uh, phases of being a business consultant, of being involved in manufacturing, involved in owning my own companies. I've done a variety of things. I couldn't have foreseen that. So I don't know how somebody at the age of 17 says to themselves, I want to be a, a designer. And I appreciate the, the effort there. But it's hard to see how to get there. And sometimes you have to take other routes to get to the direction you want to go. If you have a goal, live to it. Live to it as best you can and do what you have to do to, to take it there. But I think the, the first method of this is if you, if you view to be independent, you will 
you're, you yourself are in charge and you go where you want to go. If you mm -hmm. become dependent and go to work for a company, that's where you're going to stay unless you choose it to be independent later. I'm not saying it's bad, by all means. Some people want it, some people don't. I absolutely but, agree with you. Yeah. But uh, based on what, then, you make decisions where you will go? Poker is a good game. <laughs> okay. You deal the cards out and you get a hand and you make a decision whether to stand or to fold. And every hand is different. You never know. Life de deals you situations. You deal with the situations, you, you figure out if you're lucky there is a goal, a long-term goal that you want to get to that you will get to. Chances are though you're not going to end up doing what you start off doing or what you think you're doing because as you gain more experience and you see the world your life changes and you want different things. So the, I can't really answer your question because I don't believe the people end up where they start off anymore. There is a new era with the internet now that people can and obtain, obtain education and directions that they never did before. And to take advantage of those as much as possible, to gain the experience, to know yourself well enough what will make you happy is really the, the key thing. Actually, William, you predicted my next question. I just was going to ask you about the education and what is important for young people to study. Education to me is probably, especially in the beginning, is the most important. And the most important part of all the education I have, and I have a bunch of it, is communication. Learn to communicate. Learn your language well. Learn other languages if you can, but translators, I hate to say it, are a dime a dozen. They're out there. What is important is that you can communicate well with the people you work with that you can give them instructions, that you can accept instructions. That is most, most important. Everything else comes, whether it's mathematics or whatever you end up studying, which are all fine. And I started off in engineering school. I was accepted to a PhD program for bioengineering. And I was in very advanced mathematics, and I've forgotten it all. If I need it, I can get it back. I can go to somebody to do it. But I can communicate. I can talk. And that's the most important thing that you can learn while you're in school, is to get your communication skills down well. But uh, can you get it only from the school or, or there are also some other activities? <coughs> For example, can this uh, program, what uh, youngsters are participating here, can this be one of the um, lesson, communication lesson? Of course. Any place that you gain experience about yourself, what you're capable of and what you can give to others is an important step. And, and they can go lateral directions. You can, you can take a certain job and take it. You take a course like this. It'll help you. The important part, I, I believe, frankly, is, is to be happy in what you're doing or happy in where you're going. And if you're not, change. And these kinds of programs give you the tools as you go forward to make good decisions. And maybe you'll make bad ones. Uh, Thomas Edison said that it took him, uh, I think, a thousand times to make the carbon diode that worked in the light bulb a thousand times before he succeeded. And they said, well, how do you feel about failing a thousand times? He said, I didn't fail. I just found out a thousand ways not to do it. <laughs> exactly. So my next question will be actually about Estonia. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll do what I can. <laughs> yes. You're a top manager for investing company and you actually know pretty much about different regions and ways, uh, for example, is good to invest or bad to invest. How about Estonia and how about the young people from Estonia? Do we have any chance oh, yes, that, for very example, much so. you can you, invest in us? You are all, and what I've, from what I've been able to gather and what I've read and what I'm looking at, you are in a unique position to succeed where few in the world are. And I Sounds say that great. because you have an attitude here of pursuing new ventures and new ways to go rather than existing in staid and existing situations or throwing your hands up and go, woe is me, we can't do anything. There are programs such as this that are opening doors for people to learn about themselves and where they're going to go and give you the opportunity of help and advice uh, to head in that direction. And I see that, I'm, sadly in my country up until about 20 years ago we believed in the entrepreneurial spirit although 70% of jobs in our country comes from small business we have somehow lost this everybody wants status quo they want state they want security and that's fine I understand that but it's not what builds business uh, profits for example and I ask this question often is what is it 
Well, profit is not just making money, it's making more than something costs you. If you are making, if you are breaking even, as they say, you're not going anywhere. You can't invest, you can't grow, you can't do anything. There is this attitude that by breaking new ground, you can head in directions that, that will bring you treasure beyond belief. I, I cannot emphasize that enough, and, I, and it's only because you take opportunities because you want to, and programs like this introduce that concept to it. In Estonia, with all one thing to remember, I know the tendency is to flock to large cities, in my case, uh, New York and Boston and various other places which where the jobs and the money are. Number one, money isn't everything. It brings you nothing except it's a means to the end. But secondly, where there is little population, there is unlimited potential. And that's, that's really important to understand because you're in a competitive market throughout. I know Finland, for example, when they ran out of their paper industry and tree industry, turned to exporting experts. They would train them in their universities and they'd send them off to Saudi Arabia and various other places. They're politically neutral. Nobody cares about them. They make wonderful employees. They, got, they get lots of money and lots of experience. That was their, new, that was their trend. Uh, I don't know what the future is going to bring them or anybody else, but opportunity is there. You find, got, you've got to find fields where other people don't tread, don't want to tread, and take the step. So everything is actually now our own hands. Yeah.